All right. So it is 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I'm going to give everybody a chance to get on here. I did not want to get on here tonight, but I have to be obedient to the Lord. So I'm going to wait. Uh, being that this is a word for somebody, I'm definitely going to wait a few seconds uh, for everybody to get on here because I don't know who this word is for. Uh, but if this uh, is for you, receive it tonight. Uh, just wait a few minutes, guys. Thank you for joining me. I know it's late. Uh, it is 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. And as the room fills up, um, I honestly, the Lord knows my heart. I did not want to get on here tonight because I'm like, God, I've been on Facebook Live every night this week and sometimes twice in, in a day. So I'm sitting here on my couch. I've got some worship music on. Uh, I'm just, I'm reading the word of God and the Lord gives me a word out of Acts chapter eight. As I read this passage, I'm telling you the spirit of God hit me and said, this is a word for somebody and release it to them. So I want to release this word to you. Uh, if you're listening to me, uh, I don't care where you're listening to me. Here's somebody from Canada, William, God bless you, buddy. Thank you for joining me from Canada, wherever you're listening. If you're in the marketplace if you're someone who, and that's probably going to be about 97% of everybody that comes on here tonight or tomorrow, whenever you get this and, and read this uh, or, or listen to this word, uh, if you are, if you work in the marketplace, and what do I mean by that term? You work a secular job, whatever that may be, if, if it's an office, if it's a warehouse, a factory, whatever the case may be. Listen, I've got a word for you. I don't know who this is. I don't think it'll be for everyone, but I believe it will be for somebody. Here it is. This is the word. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. It says, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So here is Philip, and no doubt he's praying. Um kind of like he's just seeking the Lord in his uh, in his prayer time or his devotional time. And an angel of the Lord speaks to Philip and tells him and gives him specific instructions. Uh, good evening, Michael. Thank you guys for joining me. The, the angel of the Lord gives Philip specific instructions and tells him where to go, what location to take, but he didn't give him Anything else? Listen to this guy. He says, you go towards the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So Philip was obedient. He rose. The Bible says he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, watch this. Look, listen to his status, who had charge of all his tr her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship. So watch this. Here is a man. You could, let's put this in modern vernacular. Here's a, here's a CEO of a company. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. This is a word for somebody. Here's a CEO of a company. Here's a manager of a company. Here's an entrepreneur. Here's someone with great influence who is in a particular business, a particular uh uh, industry, whatever it may be. He was just going about his way. And you're going to find out that this man, although he had great influence, he had a hunger for the word of God. Friends, listen to me. I don't know who this word is for, but I feel like the, the spirit of the Lord is saying tonight that God has specifically put you in positions and it may, it may be in a mainstream position. It may be in a factory. It may be in a warehouse. It may be in retail. It may be in a grocery chain. It may be on a, an assembly line, whatever the case may be. But God knows how to put people of authority in positions that are hungry for God. But God has ordained your footsteps because they're reading something that they have not revelation knowledge of. But I believe God is setting somebody up like he did Philip. Watch this. Watch what happens. So here's this man of great authority, this eunuch of Ethiopia. The Bible says that he was returning as he was in Jerusalem. He, uh, he come to Jerusalem to worship. In other words, he went to a church service, if you would. 
Come on, somebody. And he was sitting in his chariot or he was sitting in his car. We're going to make this real uh, modern or just in modern vernacular. He was reading the book of Isaiah and the spirit spoke to Philip. Here's your man, Philip. Go and speak to this man and overtake the chariot. So could you imagine this? So Philip ran to him. And when he ran up on the chariot, the Bible says that he heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah. So he was reading it loud. And Philip asked him, sir, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come and sit with him. And he tells you that he reads a passage out of the scripture uh, dealing with the Messiah. So the Bible says in verse 34, so the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you of whom does the prophet speak this of, of himself or is this speaking of another man? And Philip opened his mouth and began at the scripture to preach Jesus to him. And as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. In other words, it could have been a pond. It could have been a lake. It could have been a, who knows? It never says specifically what it is, but he says, here's a body of water. What is keeping me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered, says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And the Bible says that both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and they were baptized. Now listen to me, friends. I'm telling you, God has a way. And I was just reading this today. I was just reading. Uh, in fact, uh, I posted this earlier. Let me give you a verse of scripture. Yes, this is a word for somebody. This is not a preaching. This is a word for somebody. Listen, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 7 that the Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. Guys, I'm going to tell you a true story. One time, many years ago, I'm telling you this is a word for somebody. God knows exactly where you're at. He knows your position. He knows your uh, uh, your uh, He knows your situation, uh, the predicament that you're in. That's what I was trying to say. And you've you've been concerned, you've been worried, and you've been stressing out. Is God, how is God going to take care of me? How's he going to do this? How's he going to move? Listen, friends, the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, if you seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. And I'm going to tell you what else in a deeper aspect of that means that God can exalt you and promote you overnight. But there's a purpose behind it. Many years ago, I worked at a, at a company called UPS Logistics. And it's in Louisville, Kentucky, where I was I lived for many years uh, I worked there. Here I am. Um, I was serving the Lord for probably about five years at that time, and I, I went in. And when I got when I got hired in, I worked out on the floor. And it was uh, it was a computer logistics company in which we dealt with computer parts and different components and whatnot. And we was out on the floor in this warehouse, and it was it was very hot in the summer. It was cold in the winter, so I was dealing with this, but I had to pay the bills. Come on, somebody else working in the marketplace. Watch this. I'm going somewhere with this. This is the word tonight for somebody. Um, so I went in there and weeks went by. I was still doing the same thing too, you know, weeks. And I began to, and the Lord began to use me where I was. So I began to, to, to witness to people. I began to testify of God's goodness, began to share my testimony with people. So it didn't take long for people to realize where I came from. They, they understood that I was a believer. They began to see the influence and the light that I was shining and the salt, uh, that I was presenting according to. That's what Jesus said. He said, let your light so shine among men that they may see your works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Now watch this. There, One day, out of the blue, I had a, a supervisor come to me on the floor and they said, we need some extra help uh, in this. And I can't remember, it's been so many years ago, but there was a particular uh, room 
uh, that they needed help in and they would take you back in this room and you had to have an access card to get into this room and when you got into this room, come on, this is the place you wanted to be because it was heated in the winter and it was cold in the summer. It was a, it was the e one of the easiest jobs there. You just, you picked up a, a hard drive and, and there were certain components you read, certain serial numbers you read and certain things and you made sure that it lined up and all in sequence and then you would pass it down the line. It, this was one of the easiest jobs in the entire company, but watch this. They were shorthanded and needed some temporary help to get them by that day. So one, so I, so I got to go in there and I was like, thank you, Jesus. Went in there, started working. Um, and uh, one day led to two days and then two days led to three days and then five days. And then I was in there for a whole week. And I remember one of the guys that worked there came up to me in private and at lunch and he says, now don't get too comfortable. He said, because you have to have seniority for many years before you get into this position. So this is just a temporary feel until they, uh, until, you know, some people, uh, I think some people quit or they moved on, they got a different job and they needed somebody to fill the gap. So I was told that it was just by chance or happenstance that they chose me. But I don't believe that because I'm a child of the most high God and that I have the favor of the Lord. Come on, somebody. So I got in there and it, it went on about seven days. And all of a sudden, I began to bring my little, and I don't have it with me, but I used to have this little Gideon New Testament, come on, uh, Bible that you can keep in your pocket. It's it's only got the new, I think it had the Psalms, the Proverbs, and the New Testament. And it was orange, and it was about that big, and I kept it in my back pocket. And when I could take a break or whatnot, I would pull out that little Gideon New Testament, and I would read the Word, and I would bring it right in there with me, because we would take 10-minute breaks, and while everybody was talking about, come on, the partying and the, this, and doing all this stuff that they were doing, and out there, no doubt, sinning and all this stuff, I'm just pulling out my little New Testament, Gideon, minding my own business, reading the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, people, uh, one guy said, oh my God, he brought the Bible with him. I can't believe he's got the Bible. And another guy came up to me, says, what are you reading? Come on, are you listening to me? He says, what are you reading about? And I began, to, I said, I'm reading about the book of Acts. I'm reading about the apostles. I'm reading about revival in the early church. And and it, it sparked a whole conversation within people. And all of a sudden, the supervisor came over and uh uh, I don't know if I should name his name just to be uh, I, I, out of wisdom. I won't name his name, but I could tell you his full name right now, but I won't. But he came over to me uh, and he said, uh, and he all of a sudden he began to mock my Christianity. He says, oh, you're a Christian, huh? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm a believer. And uh, he says, yeah, my uh, my aunt is uh is one of those christians and she's she's so gung-ho about god i can't ever hear i never can get a, a a break from her she's always telling me i need to repent and she's telling me I, I she's always telling me i need to get get right with god and he come back to god and and all this junk and and she's always calling me trying to leave me a verse and this and that and i told him i said well brother i said it sounds like she's uh that god has put her in your life for a reason he says yeah 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 whatever so needless to say uh, this went on for about two weeks, guys. Um, now watch this. So uh, I'm at home minding my own business one day. And uh, I had some dear friends of mine that lived in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Uh, don't worry if you don't know where that is. Uh, you'll miss it. If, you, if, you, if you're driving down 65 South and you blink, you'll miss this little town called Shepherdsville, Kentucky. But nevertheless, that's where I was raised. That's where I was born. But it was a little small little place in Kentucky, so don't worry about it. And I know I got some Kentucky folks on here that probably knows where that's at. And they'll amen me on that one. But anyway, I was minding my own business. And... Uh, and I had some friends of mine that lived out there, and they were Holy Ghost-filled, Bible-believing Christians, loved them to death. One of the, in fact, um, uh, 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 Tim, who was a dear, beloved brother of mine in the Lord, um, he's the one that actually married my wife and I, so I really looked up to him as a, a real a mentor in the faith. But nevertheless, they lived in a trailer park out in Shepherdsville, and they invited my wife and I over uh, for dinner one night, so we got... Uh, we got there uh, talking, and um, so we got there talking, and uh, and my and my buddy Tim's wife got to talking about. She said, "Yeah, um, 
she said, uh, she, she, she asked me, she said, where do you work again? I told her where I work. And she said, uh, she goes, that's interesting. I said, why is that? She said, uh, she goes, uh, my neighbor and she named her neighbor. And she said, my neighbor over there has a nephew that works at UPS logistics and, uh, he's a supervisor and she's been trying uh, to witness to him and, and it, like he had a relationship with a guy one time and he backslid and she's really trying to reach out to him and all this stuff and it's interesting and all of a sudden it was like the Holy Ghost just grabbed me I can't explain this guys but I'm telling you it was like the Holy Ghost grabbed me and said it's so and so and it's the supervisor that I have strategically put you in position with are you listening to me come on I'm still in the word I'm still in Acts I'm still in Acts chapter 8. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to Philip, and he says, I'm going to show you where you're going to go, and I'm going to give you the words to speak to this man of influence and this man of power, and because you'll be obedient, I will exalt you, and I will promote you. So I'm sitting here, and the, Lord, and the Spirit of the Lord speaks to me and says, this is the man, and that is his aunt that lives over there. And I said that, and I, I promise you guys, I said, that's impossible, God. I said, there's no way that's possible. And he goes, okay, you go over there and talk to her. And I said, Kathy, I said, can I go over there and meet this woman? She goes, sure, she would love to speak to you because she's a Holy Ghost, uh, older woman filled with the Holy Ghost, and she loves God. Go over there and talk to her. And I said, okay, so here goes my wife and I went over there and and sure enough, Kathy went over there with, with, with us and she knocked on the door and here's, she's standing there. And I said, uh, you know, hello, so-and-so we meet each other. And we got to talking about the Lord and just really kind of conversating. And I said, yeah, I said, uh, Kathy tells me that your nephew works at UPS logistics. And, uh, and she says, oh yeah, honey. She goes, uh, she goes that, and she named his name, and I'm telling you, it was like the fear of God came on me, and she said, that dummy's been running from God, and I leave scriptures with him all the time, I've been praying for him, and she goes, you know he's been diagnosed with cancer on his lip, and she goes, I pray that he just listens to the Lord before it's too late. And I'm telling you, a boldness came up in me, and I said, well, so and so, I said, the Lord has heard your prayers and he strategically placed me in his path because he, out of the testimony of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. And when I begin to tell her this, I'm telling you, this woman, something rose up on the inside of her and you could see her whole countenance change. She said, glory to God. And she began to share with me about this testimony, how she worked for GE for years. And she said she was just witnessing the gospel and this and that. And the Lord just shut all those doors. And eventually uh, she got so, she, she said that the Lord showed her that the brook was drying up and she basically, and she had all this money she had a nice house. She had everything, but the Lord said that the brook dried up, and she and she gave it all up, and she moved to a trailer park out in Shepherdsville. And uh, she said, you know, that her nephew mocked her about it and told her she was ridiculous and everything else and all this other stuff. So I'm listening to all this, and I'm receiving this. Come on, are you listening to me tonight? I'm telling you, I'm going to help somebody. Now, I'm going to pray for you in a minute because I'm telling you, God is going to mess somebody up, and he's going to put you in a position that only God could do. So you, so listen, the next day, here I am coming down. Uh, I couldn't wait to get to work that next day. So I'm coming to work and I walk in there and we're there. And all of a sudden we go on a 10 minute break and, uh, and here's, uh, and I'm just going to tell you his name because the chances are he, he doesn't know he's not going to watch this. And if he does, then you know what, brother, if you're still running and somehow you watch this, I pray this convicts you by the Holy Ghost and you heed his words. But his name was Alan. Okay. So here's Alan and he's over there. And, uh, here's all the guys that knew me and they knew I was a believer. And, uh, so I began to speak to them before I spoke to him. And I said, watch this. And I said, because I knew some of them had been mocking me as a Christian, as a believer, and making fun of my, my faith and everything. And I said, I said, I had an encounter with Alan's aunt that he always talks about. And I know things about Alan that he doesn't know that I know because I met his aunt. And they looked at me like I was crazy. And they said, no way, that's impossible. And I said, watch this. And I said, Alan, come here. And I called him over there. And I said, uh, I said, 
I said, uh, uh, I got something I need to t tell you. And he said, okay, well, what is it? And I said, I met your crazy spirit-filled aunt yesterday. And he says, oh, okay, right. And I said, really? And I said, and I said, I said, okay. And I told him, I said, you live at so-and-so. I said, uh, and you used to work here. And your aunt, and I told him all this stuff about him. And then I said, and your crazy aunt, I said, correct me if I'm wrong. I said, she works at GE or she did work at GE. Uh, but this happened, that happened and she quit her job. And, and you were the one of the ones that called her crazy and this and that. And she moved out to a, a trailer park out in Shepherdsville and this and that. And I'm telling you his face just like, he looked like he'd seen a ghost. And all of a sudden he stopped and, um, uh, he said, no, no, no. He said, that's not her. And, I, and the Holy Ghost said, yes, it is. He's lying. And I knew he was lying. I said, come on, man. I said, yeah, it is. And he says, no, no, no. He said, that's the wrong lady. That's not her. And uh, so he walked away. And you could tell. And he was physically almost shaking. So everybody had cleared out of the room. And he came to me privately. And he says, how did you do that? And I said, Alan, I said, don't you realize that God is after you, brother? I said, he's got your number. I said, don't you see all this? And by the way, I didn't tell you this. But I was supposed to be in that room temporarily. But God moved on my behalf and he moved me in that room permanently. And I told Alan this. I said, I had no seniority. And of all the people, there's hundreds of workers out there in the factory that could have been chosen. Why did he choose me? I said, Alan, I said, God has heard your aunt's prayers. Why are you running from God? You need to heed his voice. You need to hear his word and you need to repent and get back to him. And man, I'm telling you, tears filled up in his eyes. He listened to everything I said. Now, listen, I wish I could have told you that he repented that day and he said yes to Jesus, but he didn't. But I'm telling you, the seed was sown. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Philip in Acts chapter 8. He was minding his own business. He was doing his own thing. And an angel of God showed up one day and, and stopped everything and said, Philip, he said, you go here and I'm going to give you specific instructions and I'm going to show you someone that you're going to speak to who has influence who has power, who has seniority, and who has the ability to bless you and promote you and exalt you and acknowledge you. Come on, the Bible says a man's gifts will make room for him and set him among great men. And here's the word of the Lord for you, whoever this word is for someone. You, listen, the devil is trying to tell you that you've got to claw and scrape your way and you've got to stab people in the back and pull everybody down and cheat and squander and do everything that the system tells you you need to do so you can get on top. No, friend, what you need to do is get you a Bible, open it up, read the word of the Lord, obey the word of the Lord, and activate that word in your life and begin to do exactly what God says to do. And as you seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, then God will begin to open doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open. He can promote you. He can exalt you. He can set kings down and he can set up kings. Come on. He can he can cause he can cause that boss or that CEO of that company or that taskmaster that's over you that's put you in bondage that's put you into in, into into slavery for all those years that don't want to hear God doesn't want to hear all these things I'll remind you the same was with Pharaoh but when the time when the fullness of time had come come on there was a Moses that was raised up and the Bible says that, that Pharaoh eventually let the people go. So I'm telling you, I don't know who this word is for, but if you'll just trust him and you'll hold to his word, I'm telling you, just like he did with Philip and just like he did with me, 
He will set you. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Come on. The Bible says the path of the just, the path of the righteous is like a shining light that gets brighter and brighter into the perfect day. In other words, you're not like the wicked who grope and walk in darkness and they know not where they go and they stumble and they fall, but you are a man and a woman of God who has a, it don't matter what situation you're in and how dark it looks, God has given you a Holy Ghost flashlight that shines and illuminates the path before you. And it may not make sense to you and you may not know what to say, but it will not be you that's saying and it will not be you that's speaking, but it will be the Holy Ghost that will speak through you. If you'll just listen to him, watch for opportunities, watch uh, for those moments to open and that you can... um, that you can deliver the word of the Lord and watch how God will move on your behalf. Friends, I don't care how hard a boss may be. I don't care how hard uh, a manager or a CEO, CEO of a company may be. My friends, God can hit them where it hurts. He can take it to their heart. Listen, you know, everybody, listen, look at me. I'm touching my heart. You're touching your... Every single individual, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how uh, how rich you are, how poor you are, what your background is, what your ta- what your status is, or what your title is. We all have issues, we all have problems, and we all have needs. And I would say we all are going through something. We never know what anybody's going through. So you don't know what that CEO is going through. You don't know what that boss is going through. Perhaps that he's got a sickness. Perhaps he's got a disease that he's been to doctors and he's not told anybody about, but the Lord can put you in a position where he'll give you a word of knowledge and you can lay hands on that person, on that, on your boss. Yes, your boss. And you can, by the hand of the Lord, the Lord could heal them and deliver them of that infirmity. And, and as a result of that, they come on, they can write one check and get you out of debt. They can, they can sign the papers and promote you when you don't even have the criteria when you don't even, when you're not qualified and you're not even uh, positioned to be promoted, but God can do it. Come on. God can have you pray for somebody, for their children, or for spare them from an accident, whatever the case may be. Look what he did to Joseph. Joseph had dreams. Uh, he had the baker and the butler who forgot him. And one, one got his head taken off, but the other finally, uh, man, I feel that for somebody. But eventually over time, the other individual remembered Joseph. And because he remembered Joseph, that individual spoke to the right person at the right time. And because of that, Joseph went from the pit to the palace. Just like that, he was promoted, come on, to the governor of Egypt. So again, this word is for somebody. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know. I'm just being obedient, God. You spoke to me when I was sitting on the couch, when I was reading from Acts chapter 8 about Philip, and you said, tell somebody this is a word for them. Tell them that they don't have to rely on the strategies and the methodologies of man and Satan's system to get ahead and get be promoted. But he, but my word is still tried and it's still true. And my word says, he who humbles Humbles himself under the mighty hand of God shall be exalted in due season, but he who exalts himself shall be humbled. And I just thank you, Lord, as I'm being obedient, that Lord, I just release this word over somebody, wherever they're at, whatever business, whatever occupation that they're in. I thank you, Lord, that it's you that raises us up. It's you that sets us in high places. It's you that promotes, and it's you uh, that does what your calling us to do. And I just thank you for the glory and for the honor that's going to come out of this, the testimony that's going to come out of this, this mighty word of the Lord in Jesus name and Jesus name. Come on, somebody receive that word tonight. Listen, if a week from now, two days from now, three days from now, three months from now, whatever the case may be, when this word comes to pass and it will, because I have confidence that this word was for somebody or somebody's. And when this does come to pass, please 
Contact me, Facebook me, email me, whatever, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. You can Facebook us at End Time Headlines in our messenger. Get a hold of me. Please testify. We need to share this uh, testimony because it will encourage other people as well. So, again, guys, uh, uh, we love you guys, and thank you for joining me on this. Thank you for um, for being ob 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 obedient on your behalf, too, to receive uh, as well. So I'm telling you guys, you receive that word and you activate that word and watch God move on your behalf. We love you guys. God bless you. Have a good night.